In this tutorial, we're going to be modifying the game kit to use custom pre-built 3D maps as our play levels. I'm starting with a fresh project, so if you've been following along, it's up to you if you want to use your pre-existing project. This mod works with both top-down and side-scroll, but side-scroll mode is not truly turned to the side, only the camera is turned. And the player and the camera rig chassis still lay flat. I'll add a second tutorial for standing the chassis up, but there will be some problems that I cannot fix. They were the reason why I chose to lay both modes flat. If you go to your maps folder and then open the play level. Now go to blueprints. Open your BP level controller. We're going to add a couple of variables in here. This one we're going to call it off world map. Set it to instance editable. Add a new category, call it swap maps. Instance editable. Add another variable, we're going to call it off world map name. Also set it to instance editable. We'll set that category to swap maps. Compile, save. That's it. Alright, next. Go into the blueprints and gameplay and open your BP game instance. I'm going to actually straighten this up just a little bit. Uh, if you double click on those you can create reroute modes and just move those off where you don't have to see all that stuff I'll save alright so this is actually pulling from the BP level controller actors. We're going to pull those variables out and save them to the uh, game instance. Oops. We're going to get off world map. Put another reroute there. Pull that out. I'm going to get the off world map name. Oop. I messed up here. If you go back to blueprints, back into your controllers, BB level controller, off world map name is supposed to be a name variable type. There we go. Compile and save everything so you don't get any errors. If you just right click on this, promote the variable, and use the same name. Save and compile that. You want to come down here. We're going to be using a branch here. Just go ahead and break the link to that. False. Bring that in there. False. 
Let's see. Probably wouldn't be something they would fit in an infinite level. There would just be too much there. I'm going to leave it out. If you decide you want to do an infinite level like this, you just have to bring this over and drag it to there. Alright, off world map. So what this is going to do is instead of spawning the player, this is going to send the player elsewhere to the map that we create. Or maps. Let's give it an open level node and then just drop in the off world name. And this is before the player spawns. What happens is it opens the level and then it's going to say it's got an off, it's going to open the play level. It No matter what, it'll open the play level. Every single level opens at the play level. As, as, as soon as the game instance tries to create the player it's going to check to see if this level controller is asking for an off-world map and if it is then it's going to send to that off-world map and when it gets there the level that we're going to use we're going to have off-world map deselected set to false so then it's just going to run through and generate the player on that level Compile and save. Now all you have to do is go to your maps and go to your play level. Be sure and select your play level. Right click and duplicate it. You can name this anything you want. I'm just going to call it the mine off world one. Let's say selected. We'll go to off world one. I'm going to use level one, but whatever level you use, you have to. It has to coincide. The level number has to coincide with the level number that you you sent it from. Like if you were on uh, the play level and it's running through, and you're on like level twelve, and you want level twelve to come to this map, then this has to be set to twelve on the first one here. Also, you have to have one after that. Even if it's not even being used, this one you would have to set to level 13. But since I'm only using these, I'm going to go ahead and delete these other level controllers and just leave the first two. And the second one, we're not even going to use it, so we can just dump all the variables out of it. Just empty everything out. So now it's set back to just the default. On BP level controller one, um, I'm gonna re I'm gonna change this level to not be side scroll to be top down. Uh, the second thing I want to do is since we're doing this, we're probably not gonna be using tile maps, so you can just delete both tile maps. And I'm not gonna be using the parallaxes, so I can turn those off. It's not infinite think that's everything on the enemy movement since we've switched to top-down we'll take some top-down movements I'm just going to select the flip-flop on both of these on the enemy ships these are universal so they'll work just fine That should be everything. All right, go back to maps. Off world one. No, play level. Go back to your play level and BP controller one. You can dump all these variables out of that because we're not going to be using it. We're actually going to be sending it to an off world map. 
and make absolutely sure you spell this map name right like every letter per letter capitals capitalized not capital don't capitalize the easy the best way the foolproof way to do it is to hit F2 to rename and just control C and it copies the name so you don't have to worry about any misspellings in there if you misspell this it's going to crash your game And that's it. All right. Go back to your off-world map. Um, I'm going to go to zero, zero, zero. Let's just drop an actor in there. Something we'll be able to see to know that it's working right. Take that. I'm going to set it to zero, zero, minus 500. And we should be able to see that if we push play. Oh, one other thing. Turn those off. It does, you can use the has level sequence on either one. But it's probably easier just to use it on the... If, if you wanted to use a level sequence, to use it on the, on the off-world map that you're going to use. Just so you're not replicating the same thing over and over again go back to the play level like I said it doesn't matter which one you start these from it should go right into the game either way what? I don't know where it's getting that level sequence from. Either way, there's our shape. I'm going to turn it off just so when I have to wait for it. And there's our shape that we dropped down there. Well, there's something I hadn't seen in this project before build lighting. There is actually a directional light in here. Uh, there's no sky sphere or anything like that. Since we're just doing top down, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. And when we go to stand the chassis up, we'll get into the sky sphere and changing the and, and getting rid of that star sphere. If you want to use a sky sphere instead, um, let's actually let's put some stuff in here. Let's get that out. Good old Kenny. I'll put a link in the description. We're just going to download his little space kit here. Let's see. I'm going to drop the. If you go to models, FBX format, that's what we're wanting. FBX format. Just drag it out to your desktop. Go into your project. Go ahead and save all. Just if I hate when there's a nasty crash. I, that's why I hit save all so much. If you go into meshes, let's just add a new folder and we'll call it Kenny. Good old Kenny. Always coming through for us. We can take all of these. Select the first one, shift select the last one. We're just going to drag them right in there. We'll take everything. Okay, on here, you're going to want turn off auto generate collision. Let's see what else we have. Uh, 
we're going to leave it on the import materials and textures just so we don't have to. I think it's only got a few materials. Hit the import all. I don't know what the scale is on these. We might just scale them up, scale them down. Don't know what that was about. Apparently there's two things in there that are named the same. No smoothing groups. Well, these are pretty square anyway. I don't think we need a smoothing group. Okay. Save all. I guess we could like put us a map in here. Um, you can do this or not if you don't want to. This is a, I'm going to leave it at 8 by 8 Just create a quick map. That's a big map. Or maybe I'm just really close to it. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to create a quick map. And, uh, Let's take this, hmm, what can we put there? I'll go back into select mode here. Let's put the, pros, the post process volume at 000 so we know where the start place is. We can be able to see it. Come over to the screen, hit F. Our ship is going to start right there. And it's going to move that direction along that x-axis. So this landscape is going to be up too high. We're going to, it, it needs to be dropped to about at least 500 minus 500. And if you have mountains and stuff, you're going to run right through them. So you may have to set it lower than that, or you can just you can just shape your level around it. Where was our post process again? Right there. Should stick something there. I'll be able to see. All right. Hey, I'm actually going to dig a trench here. Just hold down shift. And just kind of rough stuff up just so we'll be able to see it if you go to your content folder go to materials environment no planets go to your planet materials and on M texture planets right click that and duplicate it and we'll rename it to M underscore texture landscape you can use a landscape material if you want I'm just throwing something together really quick I'll have to put some UVs in here I've changed the text co texture coordinates put that up there Hook that up to the UVs, hook it up to the UVs. I'm going to spread this out pretty thin. So I'm going to change the tiling to be really huge. Alright. Save that. Actually, you should use a different texture too. Let's use. Was the volcanic? I think that one looks way better. All right, over here on your landscape, go back into like selection mode. Let's see what that looks like. 
Ooh, creepy. Hit you play. That definitely looks different. I don't like that chip though. <laughs> Let's change it. That does not fit there. I'm just going to use the Pelican. Yeah, that looks better. I'm going to go back to your post process volume. And then you can start just laying stuff out here any way you want. So all you have to do is just lay it out and then build, lay it out and build. Or you could, another thing you could do, since you know the ship is spawning there and going that way. Um, let's take a... No. We could use a... Can you see through these? Yeah, you can. Okay. Let's take that and put it there then. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Sorry, my keyboard's around the corner. I'm trying to type around the corner. And we can extend that. I'm going to leave it there. Let's extend it that way. So we know this is the middle of the ground. Just use it as kind of a marker. We can delete it once we're done building the level. Woo! Yeah, I made that long. Okay. Then you just take your meshes. Buildings or whatever. This stuff is tiny, tiny. It is very tiny. So you're going to have to scale it up a lot. Yeah. Ten. Ten and you get that size. But it may, it's it could be closer than that. Wow, look at all the shadows. Her bullets are casting shadows. Well, that you'll have to fix that if you do want to fix it, is you'll have to go to your individual, whatever's casting a shadow, you'll just have to go to the blueprint for that and turn off cast shadows. Like that one was in blueprints, enemies, enemy projectiles. Open the enemy projectile, find the mesh, scroll down here and turn off cast shadow. And I'm sure lots of stuff is going to be cast in shadows that you're not going to want. Uh, next problem is these enemies are going to sit here forever. They're never going to leave. So we're going to have to change that so that they time out. Otherwise, they're, just, you're, they're going to run you right off the end of your level. And we want to make a way that players won't be able to do that. So what you want to do is the enemies that you use on these levels or you can use these enemies for all your levels it's up to you go to the movements move her back flip-flop actually let's make a duplicate of that flip-flop TD we'll change that to timeout So that you know that these actually do time out. And they're going to sweep. They're going to sweep. So what you want to do. You're going to set a timer. And then we're going to kill these sweepers. So that they stop sweeping. At the end of the timer. So up here. So you get the splines. You're on the spline, set timer by event right here, delay. We'll say like 
seven seconds. No, I'm gonna make that ten. After ten seconds. Uh, let's make a variable. Call it timeout. Oh, wait. I'm going to set timeout to true right there. Down here, this is the sweep. This is after they've done their loop and then they start sweeping. Now you could cut it here, but it's still going to play all the way through the timeline. Or you could cut it there and it's still going to play all the way through the timeline. If you cut it when finished, then they're going to you put a branch here and we cut it there then what's going to happen is they're going to disconnect and they're going to start floating away um if you put if we put it here should put it after dead if we put it here then it'll just stop them wherever that timeout in ends wherever that time that but whenever that time that we set up there whenever it that uh, delay times out then it will just cause them to disconnect right then and we can change that around so let's just stick it right here pull up and let's put a branch there stick time out in there break the link false so whenever this turns true nothing happens it just ends the loop that's happening right here this will play through one way and then it, after they they get to the end it just replays over again so let's just see what they do five one thousand six one thousand seven one thousand eight one thousand nine one thousand ten one thousand eleven one thousand twelve one thousand Okay, they're never ending. Okay, ten seconds. Well, I miss here. Is that too long? All right, and then go back to your map, DP level controller, and make sure you select the movement to those. Press play, and you should time out after the time you set. And then they'll just start moving down at whatever the player forward speed is, the movement speed. See, they seem like they're going a little bit slow. So what we could do, one thing you could do is in your level controllers, you could space them apart further, so the time between enemies They still seem like they're going really slow though. So, let's see. Timeout. We're going to create a custom event. We'll just call it go away. 
right here. Pull this up. Had to do once. I set a timer by function name. Call the function name go away. Because you're going to spell that right. <laughs> set it to looping. Uh, we'll set time to point one. All right, let's go to. Okay, that is catching delta seconds, so we can move it by that. Viewport. I think they're moving negative along the x-axis. We'll try it one way. If it doesn't work, then we'll try it the other way. Get actor location. Split struct pin. Set actor rotation. Or set actor location. Set actor location right the wrong one split struct pin uh, let's see no we're not using any physics there's no need to set any of that okay you're gonna want to put a Let's get a reference to self. We'll do an is valid check. Push B and click to make a branch. Move these out a little bit. This will keep us from getting an error. So if then the ship is in self, if it's being destroyed. It won't generate an error. Alright. Z, we'll just hook to Z. Y, we'll hook to Y. X. Minus. Float minus float. Down here we're going to take delta seconds. Pull it out and drop. Get delta seconds. And then we're going to multiply that. I don't know what I just hit. Oh, float, float. Stick it in there. We can just make this a number. Uh, let's say 200. Pull that up, bring it into the X. Let's see, got it. Go away. Got it go away looping try that press play Probably because of that timer. Speed that timer up.
to set the timer back. Maybe we're just not setting it high enough. Well, those things are just clickety. Hmm. You know what we could do? Let's do this. <laughs> this is going to do something crazy. Got a branch here. Pull out the false there. That'd go away up here. Don't need any of that other stuff on it. Took our time out on the condition. Oh yeah, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, anyway, that seems to work pretty good. Uh, you would have to add, just add this function. You can actually make this into an actual function instead of just using it on the screen but it's probably a lot easier to get to here actually we need it to be here anyway because what we're going to do is we're going to put a delay right here When they hit this, we're going to give them about three seconds. And then we're going to kill them. Let's go to off world. We'll be able to see it over here as they die. not just dying here we'll just use the actually we'll use that dead also There we go. Now they go away. Alright, this trigger, once you get done, 
placing all your pieces, whatever you want to put down here. Um, let's see. I could. You can use whatever game kit you want or whatever graphics kit you want. You don't have to use this Kenny stuff. It's just something that everyone could get their hands on pretty easily. Ooh, let's take some ships and lay them down here. What is the scale I set on that? 10. Okay, let's see. We'll set that to 10. That was the wrong one. Here. Oh, where'd it go? Well, apparently Kenny's um his origins aren't set. Which is not usually real good when you're trying to move stuff around because you can use these. To snap pieces like floor pieces. Like say if you wanted to where's there from floors, platforms. Yeah, that's terrible. That is very terrible. Because when you try to add another platform to that. Well, I mean, we could try it. Control copy, control paste. Let's set this to 100 and see. Yeah, I guess they still work. It just the, the origins just aren't in the right place. It just takes some getting used to. Let's copy all of them. I'm going to set some cool stuff up on here. Hit the space bar if you want to change the transform. I don't know why I don't like the way that does that. like some enemy ships just waiting for you anyway you get the idea so what I want to show you on these mountains and stuff is if you like raise something up here really huge My bad. So, you just want to keep an eye on that kind of stuff. It's still a little bit high. What you could do is you could place a plane and set it at zero so you know where your player ship's going to be. Just drop a plane in there. We'll scale it to ridiculous size. Set it to zero, zero, zero. And see, and you can see that that's still going to poke up through there just a little bit.
Ninja. Or, where is it at? Oh, yeah, you use selector. You can get the eye here. Just don't forget to delete it before you play your game. Or, after hitting in game. So that way you can't see it in your, during gameplay. I like mountains and stuff, I guess they really do look pretty cool. I'm just going to add a lot of... It's going to add a lot of uh, size to your game. And those things are getting it. Alright, that's all for this tutorial, guys. Uh, good luck. <laughs> Alright, that's all for this tutorial, guys. Uh, I'll do the other tutorial later. The one for standing the ship chassis up. Uh, just like and subscribe if you want to keep up with the tutorials. <laughs>